The RTX 40 series is not coming as soon as you want it to, and it's your fault. Wi-Fi 7 is here already, and all of Canada went down. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your Brett host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news that I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast. And we're gonna start off today talking about how there's new indications that you want new GPUs. Well, you don't get new GPUs because you're too busy not buying the current GPUs, making it so that everybody who is expecting mining to go on forever now has to hold on to stock that they paid way too much for, and they're gonna be swimming in losses, and they're gonna have to hold on to these things because they don't wanna sell them at such a huge loss, but you guys won't buy them at a reasonable price. At least that's the current report that's out there that the RTX 40 series is not happening because there's a flood of used 30 series that's out there due to miners. And it's also making it so that there's an issue with retailers not being able to sell their current stock of GPUs. And so Nvidia doesn't want to push out a new series until there's some more alleviation in the supply chain, making it so that people who sell GPUs can actually reliably do so. But you're greedy butts want to buy GPUs at less than MSRP. You want to buy them affordably, like you couldn't get your hands on them for the last two years. And now you're somehow thinking, you know what? I waited, I've been good, okay? I stayed on my diet of not paying scalper pricing for these GPUs. So I deserve to spend $300 on an RTX 3070. That's what I want. And because of you, everybody else has to suffer. What do you think of yourself? How can you live with your face in the mirror every morning? I have to ask myself that very same question, but it does seem to make a little bit of sense that Nvidia would delay the release from October until December. It's a couple of months to potentially help the supply chain loosen up, get GPUs into the hands of people over the holiday season as you know, the ceremonial uh, Thanksgiving GPU that's passed around at your family's dinner table. It makes tons of sense. So let me know what you think of all that down below in the comments. And in case you're looking at passing around the ceremonial laptop, the MacBook Air M2 looking to be a good choice for that. It got put out for pre-order this past Friday. It's actually going to ship this coming Friday, July 15th. And now we do have preliminary benchmarks coming out of the M2 chip in this MacBook Air. And it turns out that it's nearly as good as the M2 chip that's in the MacBook Pro. When it comes to Geekbench scores, the single core was only off by 20 points. The multi-core was actually faster on the M2 MacBook Air. The the obvious big difference here is not whether or not this chip can perform well in a single isolated benchmark. The MacBook Air does not have an active cooling fan, so how long it can actually keep up at that performance is actually the more important question that a Geekbench score is not going to answer, and we have to wait for reviews coming out. What I believe is Thursday, we should start seeing those to come out. So the long-term performance of the M2 chip on the MacBook Air is gonna be a key indication. I think the 13 inch MacBook Pro just makes so little sense. It's it's not smart. I don't like it. There's so many things wrong with it. You could save a few hundred dollars and get the MacBook Air, or you could save up a few hundred dollars and get the 14 inch MacBook Pro with the M1 Pro chip. All of that makes more sense to me. But let me know if you're considering a MacBook Air, the new M2 version down below in the comments. And in case you were considering not picking up an Oculus Quest until Facebook dropped Facebook login for that, well, boy, howdy. You're in luck, they announced it, it's gone, okay? You no longer will have to log in with your Facebook account. Now you need to uh, log in with your Meta account. Yes, trading one evil for another. I don't know why people thought you wouldn't have to log in with some sort of credential that was still tied to the same parent company, but it's happening. No longer Facebook, it's actually Meta. The key difference here is that Facebook only allows you to have one account tied to allegedly one real person, whereas you can have more than one Meta account for different purposes that you might want, whether it's work, whether it's play, whether it's work play or play work, you know, you can mix it up and have a jolly good time in the metaverse with your meta login on your meta quest too. I love it, don't you? Sad world we're living in. And what the crypto stunk said, let's find out. Bitcoin down 3.87% to be at $20,774. Not a lot of movement in the crypto market. Ethereum down 4.4% to be at 11.64, and Dogecoin down 3.4% to be at 6.7 cents. But don't worry if you think crypto is too expensive, okay? Because you just, you need to have more money. Number one, you just get rich. Line goes up, stock goes up, stunks go up, crypto goes up all of the time. But number two, well now, you don't have to worry your little brains about it because there's a buy now, pay later service coming out for NFTs. You're welcome. It's gonna be called Ape Now. 
pay later. Wish I was kidding. It's run on the Polygon blockchain and it can work with the Board Ape Yacht Club, Mutant Ape Yacht Club. I want to say eight. I don't, I'm just, my mouth is messing up. Adidas Originals into the metaverse. And uh, yeah, so you essentially have to pay a 25 to 50% deposit on your NFT and then you can pay the rest off over a long period of time for interest rates and payments and oh golly goodness like you think it was getting bad with like paypal's paying for and then apple just came out with their buy now pay later stuff and now it's for nfts which just it'll help you get that little that little piece of digitally reproduced artwork and, and not not like reproduced in like a it, it was redrawn but like it was sexually reproduced. I'm moving on from that one, sorry. Okay, Reese, what you got for us with the UFD deals? Hottest tech deals out on the internet. Tell me, boy. Hey friends, Reese here, another cold day in South Africa, but bringing you the hottest tech deals out on the internet. Today we have an EVGA X01 Pro Capture Card, an external USB capture card that you can use for all your devices with up to 4K 30 recording or 4K 60 pass through. It's currently going for 99.99, which is 55% off. And next up, we have a Logitech G613 Lightspeed Wireless Mechanical Gaming Keyboard, which can run either in Bluetooth mode or with the wireless dongle is currently $61.99 which is $68 off. You can check out all these deals and more in the link in the video description. Cheers. Love Reese. Love that guy. I don't know if he gave us deals today because he films it separately from when I do this. I hope he did. If he did it, Catlin, um, give me an angry face if he did miss it and then a happy face if he didn't miss it. You see this face? This is a happy face. One of the deals I've been scouring for is a good Steam Deck dock. And we've talked about this previous one in the episode of Hot News. J Souse, Saux, Saux, however you're supposed to pronounce it. They have what I would consider the best available Steam Deck dock out on the market. It has a USB that plugs appropriately into the Steam Deck and it gives you all these USB ports and an ethernet jack. The only thing that I neglected to find out until it actually went on sale for $40 was that this was a 100 megabit port on, on the ethernet. And then these USB-A ports were USB 2 speed. Not great. Uh, it was only $40. But that the reason this matters is because it, this is V2. Okay, they're coming out with the version 2 for $50. And now these are USB 3 ports. That's a gigabit LAN port. It makes a lot more sense. This gets me super excited. I want it, please. Okay, I'll buy it until the official Steam Deck dock comes out. I'm excited for that one. And officially, you shouldn't be able to use Intel's original discrete graphics card on anything besides specific Intel platforms, like the, the motherboards that they provided with it. The DG1, known only to run with Intel stuff until somebody was like, nah, I'm gonna run with it on my APU system. Somebody plugging it into their 5700G system, getting workaround with compatibility support module disabled, and then booting it up with integrated graphics, but then still displaying out on the HDMI on the DG1. Well, it's not great. They were using it for a media decoding setup. So that makes a little bit more sense, especially considering the DG1's a little rough in the teeth and driver support, not that great. Ah, it's a, it's a neat little thing that somebody did. And it's a neat little big thing that somebody's doing. Santa Monica Studios, God of War. It's, it, we got the Ragnarok release date. Ragnarok's happening November 9th. I'm so excited for this. They came out with a cinematic trailer. I'm very excited for this game. I just, I can't, I can't not be. I'm looking very much forward to it. And Ubisoft is looking very much forward to Skull and Bones because it's coming out the day before Ragnarok. Them very confident in what they have that they're gonna be able to compete. You gotta give people on PC and Xbox something else to play while all of the PlayStation people are enjoying Ragnarok. It's gonna be on PS5 as well, but nobody on PS5 is gonna be playing this game on November 9th. But a game that wasn't content to compete with Ragnarok for Spoken getting delayed yet again. Originally it was supposed to come out in May of this year, then it got delayed until until October 11th, they decided they weren't ready. Probably also would have had the hype pulled a little bit by Ragnarok releasing less than a month later, kind of like what happened with Horizon Forbidden West. That's supposedly a good game. Still haven't played it because everybody was so excited about Elden Ring. And everybody's so excited about Toyota's plug-in hybrid vehicles that they're not waiting for the full battery vehicles coming out from Toyota because they've used up all of their EV federal tax credits. This applies to the first 200,000 EVs that a vehicle manufacturer sells. This essentially going to all of Toyota's plug-in hybrids like the RAV4 Prime, the Prius Prime, and whatever else ones that they have out there. Even though Toyota did just start to roll out their BZ4X in collaboration with Subaru, that's not really officially out on the market. So Toyota using up the vast majority of 
above their EV tax credits. Now it's like a sliding scale until the end of the year and it's half of that, like 37.50, and then it's gonna go away at the end of the year. Essentially, that's the general gist. GM and Tesla are the two other companies that have lost it. Ford not quite losing it just yet. I shouldn't have put this here, but you know what? You gotta go fast sometimes in case you want the fastest internet out there. Wi-Fi 7 is here for you because there's a Chinese company coming out with the world's first Wi-Fi 7 router. Don't you worry that Wi-Fi 7 is not a standard yet and that this is all made up and doesn't matter. It's going to be so fast, up to 18.4 gigabits per second on a 6 gigahertz band which is stupid fast, about double what you can get on Wi-Fi 6. It's supposed to have tons of support for six gigahertz bands, 320 megahertz bands, and it's also gonna support multi-link operation, which gives you better latency and reliability by allowing your device to use multi-channels at the same time. And this is gonna be great, even though the Wi-Fi Alliance isn't looking forward to certifying Wi-Fi 7 until next year, but uh, it's a fast router. And somebody says it looks like Bastion's head from Overwatch, which, I don't know if that's true, but there you go. And here you go, people who are driving a non-Tesla. See, this is why it should have been closer to the other ones. I'm still talking about cars. The Tesla is gonna be rolling out their ability for other electric vehicles to charge on the Tesla supercharger network in the United States later this year. They've already rolled this out to some extent in some European countries, and now it does look like it's going to be coming out later this year to the North American customers, which is great for people out there. I know that the supercharger advantage is one of the main reasons to go with Tesla when it comes to trying to decide which electric vehicle to go with. And if that advantage can be nullified, that actually opens up a lot more options in my book of which ones I would be personally considering. And Elon Musk no longer personally considering buying Twitter. He's done. It's officially bailed out. It's not that official. Anyways, uh, it, his report saying that he sought the data to prove that Twitter doesn't have as many bots or spam accounts and that Twitter failed to provide all of that data, even though from Twitter side, they said that they've provided this data multiple times. Twitter just being like, uh, guy, uh, we're gonna make you commit to this transaction, even though you wanna pull out. There was the billion dollar termination fee that's in there, which Elon Musk agrees to pay if he doesn't get the funding to secure the takeover and Twitter would pay if something else happened. But specifically with this, there is a contract clause in the agreement that was signed between Elon Musk and Twitter that Twitter can force Elon Musk's hands to buy this if he still has the funding. I think it's called the specific performance clause and they're essentially gonna bring this before a judge in Delaware in order to potentially push this forward, which is what Twitter is saying that they're doing, that Elon Musk is wrong in his assessment of the bot situation and that he just doesn't know what he's talking about. He still has provided no public evidence that what he's claiming is true. It's mostly anecdotal and saying people to run their own tests on Twitter, which is not how that works. But this will likely get dragged out in the courts. And the only people winning right now are the legal teams for Twitter and Elon Musk. And Ford is losing back to cars again. Great structuring of today's episode, Brett. Ford recalling 100,000 of their hybrid vehicles over a fire risk. The Corsair Escape and Maverick hybrid vehicles can potentially catch fire. 100,600 89 affected the 2020 to 2022 models can potentially uh have an issue where yeah they can they can catch on fire ford saying that it hasn't really been a problem there's no injuries being reported from anybody who's had them but uh you might want to bring it into the dealership they're going to be letting you know about this this is after they've already had issues with the mock e's that they've had to recall because of battery uh, heating issues with a terminal that was overheating on the mock e that could be fixed by an over-the-air update the hybrid issue has to be brought into the dealership can't be fixed over the air. Ford not really having a good time when it comes to their EV stuff. And Canada not having a good time when it comes to their wireless internet. Rogers, which is one of the largest telecoms in Canada, going out on Friday, just completely vast majority of customers not having their stuff on Friday, on Saturday is when it was restored. It turns out that a routine BGP update potentially went wrong, which caused all of this to go down. And uh, safeguards, if you're if you're a large multi, uh, multi-billion dollar conglomeration, you might wanna 
make it so that your stuff doesn't go down regularly. Like, I don't know. I'm just a man who hold, hosts hot news and I don't know anything about NFL Plus, but the NFL is planning on rolling out their own live streaming service later this year, according to Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the National Football League, saying that it's it's going to happen. They're going to talk about what NFL Plus is. It's expected to cost about five dollars per month and you could get live games on your phones and tablets. The ones that you could see if you had a TV set up, which most people don't these days, or at least most people that I know don't have it. I don't know. It, they also have an NFL Sunday ticket. They also have NFL Game Pass, how they're going to roll all of this together and make it a cohesive experience. Probably won't. NFL's not known for doing that kind of thing. And Blizzard's not known for... Uh, Good things right now, and they're shutting down Heroes of the Storm. It's dead. They're not releasing any more content for it. It's going into a maintenance mode. Heroes of the Storm just gonna have to storm on through, keep on trucking, as they say. And the James Webb Space Telescope is gonna truck us with some images. Tomorrow, we're getting details on a whole bunch of stuff. NASA revealing the things that they're actually gonna be showing off, like the Carina Nebula, as well as another nebula that we're gonna see, a gas planet that's close by. Anyways, 10.30 a.m. tomorrow, we're getting the official first colored images out of the James Webb Space Telescope. I am mega excited for this. I hope you are as well. And and I'm excited to be done with this episode of Hot News because it's been a little bit of a long one. Don't forget, you can submit tech memes to our subreddit. Go to reddit.com forward slash r forward slash UFD tech. You can participate in meme review that we happen to have every Wednesday live over on Twitch. Anyway, submit your tech memes over there. We'd love to have them. And I'll see you back here for more tech news tomorrow, my friends.